There's a sweet passage in Proverbs chapter 2. It says, if you seek her, it's talking about wisdom and understanding, as silver, and search for her as for hid treasures, then you shall understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The word treasure is throughout the scripture, and there's so many treasures. It's like, like, it's, like it's hidden. Uh, the treasure of the kingdom of heaven, which we're going to get to in a parable of this made-up story of Jesus that illustrates beautifully the absolutely worth, the absolute worth and the value of finding the kingdom of God. And so, the, have you ever gone treasure hunting? You know, like, have you ever considered being an archaeologist, you know, to dig in the earth and find maybe rubies or gems or diamonds or silver or gold it reminds me of uh, the stories of old the romantic stories of old of uh, the people that went out west uh west and looking for gold you know and uh there are serious treasures that is worth far more than real silver real gold like material silver real gold and merchandise and the bible says all you can desire not to be compared unto the spiritual riches of wisdom of knowledge of understanding in this particular story that Jesus told, it's going to be his fifth in Matthew 13. And this, this one, he spoke, I believe, only to the disciples. So in the story uh, that we just told about with the mustard seed and the leaven, then it says Jesus kind of, what did he do? He kind of uh, like sent the uh, multitudes, the crowds away. And then he entered back into the house. The Bible says, then he left the crowd. Now, there's two different ways of saying it, seeing that. Either he sent them away or he left the crowd. It could be either or. And went into the house. His disciples came to him. I love those words. Just sit on that for a little bit. His followers came to him. That's what I want to do. And I do. I come to Jesus. Do you come to Jesus? Are you a disciple of Jesus? Are you a follower, a learner of him? I mean, you're coming to this video and listening, and it's not the same as coming to Jesus himself. I'm a nobody, really. I'm not that special. The one who's special, who's really the treasure that we should find is Jesus. And he really wants to be found. And the Bible says, seek and you shall find. If you seek after him, you'll find him. And if you can turn towards him and pray and start seeking him, he'll, he'll come to you. Um, and... They asked him, well, what is a parable of the weed, uh, the weeds or the, remember the wheat and tares, um, that, that parable? Now, I already explained it, but in the passage in Matthew chapter 13, he now explains it when he's alone with his disciples. The reason Matthew um, separated it is because he was telling like parable after parable at the shore uh, in the boat while he sat, while the, uh, the crowd stood and he said all these parables. Well, later the disciples said, what does that mean? I don't know. What does that mean? <laughs> and so later they asked him about it. And that's why it's written later in the chapter of Matthew 13. Have you ever looked at chapter 13 of Matthew? It's really sweet. I would encourage you as you go through this, some of you might be doing that, where you read the Bible first or you read it afterwards, and then you'll get far more out of it. And he answered, and then he told the story, which I'm not going to repeat. And then I love the ending of that. Um, he said this quite a few times, by the way, in the Gospels. He that has ears, let him hear. In other words, are you listening? Are you really listening? Are you really listening to these stories? Then Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is, heaven is like. Now, if you remember, he said that nine different times. So he said it eight, eight times. Um, uh, well, actually, uh, Matthew said it six times. But in the New Testament, no, Matthew said it six times in chapter 13 of Matthew. And then eight times he said, the kingdom of heaven is like, he also said in chapter 20 and chapter 22, which we'll get to later. He also said the kingdom of heaven is likened unto. The point is, what is this kingdom of heaven like? And then he tells these beautiful stories. This is what Jesus is really trying to say. Now, recently we just talked about the mustard seed and the uh, leaven, how it permeates how it grows and it spreads uh, you know really cool now this time he goes into the fact that this kingdom is worth more than you can imagine the value of the the dominion of jesus christ in your life the value of the riches of the spiritual kingdom of god now is far far um 
uh, more important than anything in life. Okay, so this is what he said. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. Remember I mentioned treasure earlier. Hidden in a field. Oh, there's that word hidden again. It's hidden. So the kingdom of heaven is on earth right now. The kingdom, I mean, at least part, you know, the spiritual part, the invisible part later is going to be visible, as I keep saying. The kingdom of heaven is here on the earth right now. It's already started. And it's hidden because most people don't know it. They miss it all the time. Why? Because they're not seeking after the Lord. Uh, now, this, this is cool, though. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure a hidden treasure in a field. Oh, there's a field again. Remember, like over and over, he keeps talking about this field. So I think the field could be the world. Some people think it's the gospel. Some think people think it's the actual Bible and all that. I think it's just out here waiting for you to find it. Um, like you can find it today if you want. If you don't know about Jesus and you really don't know him and you can, you can connect with him. When a, man, when a man found it, now obviously it seems like he found it by chance. It wasn't deliberate. Um, and you just, he stumbled across it. Now this could be, he could, you could picture, who knows what this man is like, it, it, or it could be a boy or a girl or a teenager, you know, or a woman or, you know, whoever it is. Um, so he finds it by chance. He runs across it. Like you just happen to hear the message of the gospel or you happen to run into someone who knows about Jesus or something. He finds it, he finds it by chance. It's not like he was seeking for it at this point. Um, and he says, this man uh, finds it, he realizes he finds a treasure. It could be a peasant. It could be like a field worker. It could be a, a servant uh, who's hired by a guy uh, who owns that field. And he finds it and he hides it again. You know, he says, oh my goodness. Now he probably just buried it right back or he hid it somewhere else in the field or something. And then he goes to the, uh, oh, first he goes out and with joy, real joy, is so happy about this that he literally takes all his possessions, whatever they are, maybe he isn't a peasant, maybe he's rich, and he sells everything he has. This is the big point of this kingdom of, I mean, this kingdom of heaven parable. This is it right here. He sells everything he has, think about it. He has a garage sale, <laughs> or he just takes everything and he keeps selling and selling and selling until he empties himself of all his possessions. And then he goes buys that field. Now he goes to the owner. Now evidently the owner didn't know about that um, that treasure in here. He really should have told told the owner. But the emphasis isn't on this. Jesus doesn't focus on that. But he should have told the guy. Maybe uh, this owner had bought this property, and the 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 treasure was hidden by the previous owner, and the and the owner died, and and he knew the secret of that tr hidden treasure there, and he he didn't you know he didn't tell anyone. Uh, but regardless, uh, he hit the guy, someone hid that in that field. By the way, that was very common and probably still is in the east, in the eastern part of the world. Very common because people would ransack their uh, properties. There were robbers. There were Roman government. There were, uh, they tried to take the land a number of times. And so, and you know, there were people that uh, you, you would take your treasure. You don't just, you don't, you need to hide it. Sometimes they would have it in vaults. Um, that were underneath the house. They, this is true. Another thing they would hide in their closets, you know, and maybe behind the walls. Um, they would, a lot of times they hid it in the fields. And by the way, that happened a lot through the Bible. Achan, you know, in the Bible way back, um, people, you know, the Achan, uh, it's really Achan. Uh, he took his, he found some silver gold and he hid it in his tent. And then there's, th throughout the scripture, there's a, a lot of cases I'm trying to think of some of them that I know about and I've read about. Well, here's the one in the, the parable of the talents later on, another parable where he hid it in the, in the dirt. He hid it in, the, in, the, in, the, in his uh, you know, stuff. Well, let me go on. So there's several passages, uh, like I said, about, you know, that were hiding uh, their stuff. But um, so he found this, this treasure and, and then he decided to... Um, he decided to sell everything he has. And I love that with joy he did it. He wasn't, oh, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. <laughs> He's like, really? Look at this treasure. I want to, I want this. I want the kingdom of God. I want the rule of God in my life and all. And so he sold everything he had. And so whatever is going to keep you back from Jesus, you need to, you need to stop it. You need to get rid of it. You can't buy the kingdom of heaven, but it's a principle, it's a, a point, it's a, just a parable saying that you sacrifice everything, you sell everything, you give everything. When I gave my life to Jesus, October 5th, 1977, on a Wednesday night, I gave my life to Jesus. 
from that day on, I haven't looked back. I mean, seriously, I made Jesus Lord that day. Totally. I mean, really, it's already, I'm lock, stock, and barrel. And I'm happy, and I'm rich, and I had the treasure. <laughs> I found it, you know? And so he says, Then in his joy went and sold all that he had, and he bought that field. Go, sell, and buy. That's what you need to do. And uh, now I've told you about the treasure, and I keep using the same treasure thing because I don't have a whole lot of objects to show that treasure box. But uh, it could be like a box, or it could literally be like a jar. Maybe he, and this is, they do this. They took jars of money right here. here here's the money right here. They took jar of money. Maybe he found a jar of a lot of coins, you know, and so he took that and he, you know, open. he's got all this coinage, you know, all this rich money here, like this, okay? And of course, these are quarters, and but maybe they were gold, you know, a whole, a whole lot of money there. And so he, he had this jar here of, maybe he found it, and then he hid it back, and then he bought that field. I think it's important to know that um, God wants you to give your life to him, and then he gives his riches to you in his kingdom. And so the kingdom of heaven is like that. And uh, the next parable is really um, very close to that. And it's like a double parable. One is a parable of the treasure, if you will, and the other is a parable of the uh, uh, pearl. And by the way, that's really common, uh, what rabbis did. And also, uh, Jesus did that a lot. Remember, he said, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. So you have light and salt. Remember, he said, don't, cast, don't give that which is holy to the dogs. Don't cast your pearl before swine, pigs, dogs, you know, so there's a, a double there. I mean, I'm just trying to show you there's a lot of passages like that. Do you remember the thing when he says um, a disciple should be as his master, a servant as his Lord? See, two different things and a double. Another one is like the uh, garment, the patch, patching of the garment, it'll tear. And then the wine and the wine skins, that's uh, another one. The kingdom divided itself cannot stand a city divided against the kingdom. I'd say a lot of them. And then we just told about that one just recently where it says a mustard seed is in the leaven. There are really a lot of different things that are really close to each other. And so there's doubles. Um, and this is what this next one is. He said, he talked about the treasure hidden in the field and you buy the field. And then, and then the other one is, is going to be the pearl of great price. But the main points on this, uh, this parable, and I hope you remember it, he's telling his disciples, what, you give your life to this, you give your life to kingdom. And by the way, they literally died. They sacrificed their whole life. That's sort of a, a buying. You know, you don't buy a kingdom. But God, God purchased you. Oh, by the way, some people believe that, that, um, that the treasure there is you the church and you are definitely his treasure the bible says in exodus 19 that we are his treasure possession he's talking to the people of israel there and people think that the field is israel's people think that the the treasure is us and that jesus christ he went and sold all he did he died to buy the field i mean that's a that's a good that's a good picture it's it, you can parallel it I don't think so personally, but you know, I could be wrong. I could change this later on if God reveals something different. But the main thing is I want you to uh, this start digging, you know, get, get, start digging like an archeologist, you know, start digging in the word of God, start digging for Jesus, start give, and give your life to him. He's worth it. Um, so take your spiritual tools and be an archeologist and, and dig in the word of God, dig in this, and then pray deep, pray hard, seek the Lord and give your life to Christ and you will get the kingdom of heaven and it'll be like a treasure in a field.